Hey guys, welcome back to Benosa Estramalco's channel. On today's game review, we are going to check out this fun game, and it is called I Spy Bingo. So if you're new to this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, because every week we share a new game. So I Spy Bingo is really two games in one. You have the I Spy component, and you have the bingo component. So let's check out the game. The first thing that I want to show you, it's a pretty large box. I mean, just look at this. It is larger in size and I guess I don't mind large games if it's a large, oops, <laughs> it's a large game. As you could see here, it is not a large game. There is no game insert or anything here to make it worth like, oh cool, like this is a large game, so it needs a large box. So there's something I noticed. Now, next you have the game, the bingo boards, because it's I Spy and Bingo. So you have the bingo boards here. And I like it, they are double-sided. So whatever number of bingo boards you're getting, you are getting double. And if you play with kids, or if you play for yourself, even though the concept is the same, it's nice to know that you have what to choose from. And as you can see here, there's quite a large selection. So you're always gonna get something new and different. These are made of a thicker cardboard. So they are cardboard, keep it away from water. You know, you know how it goes, but it's thicker. So they're not really so bendy. So that's kind of a plus. So here are the boards. Next, you have the I Spy part, and these are also double-sided. So same as the board, you never know actually what you're playing with. And I like it. I, I can't help myself. I like a game that has multiple levels or multiple ways to play because, again, when you're playing with kids, and especially if they're going to ask you for the same game over and over again, it's nice to know that they are double-sided so you as the adult have what to play with. And last but not least, we have the I Spy chips. They are um, they're, they're cardboard, but they're nice. They're red. They say I Spy, and they fit nicely over the I spy dot. So let's actually take all of these components, the cards, the board, the markers, and let's head down to the table to play I spy. Playing this phonics bingo is really, really simple. This I spy bingo and you choose a game board and you choose the side you want to play with. Now, something that I found quite interesting was you have the G, I'm going to give you a close-up, and then you have an H, an S, and surrounding it are things that start with that letter, seahorse, seashell, starfish, and that's, I like that. But as an educator, we have G, guitar, love that, but G for gingerbread? Eh. Granny Smith Apple is a far stretch, so you, you kind of win some, you lose some with this game, so... In terms of education, you have to really be cautious in how you play it, especially if you teach phonics, because G is not for gingerbread. But anyway, that aside, then you choose the side you want to play with. You can choose white, or you could choose the light blue side. For me personally, it doesn't really matter. Just shuffle them all together and move on. So the game is like any other bingo that you've ever had. Or actually, this I would think this is easier, because you can Z and then match Z for zebra. Or if it has a carrot, you go to the C for c carrot or D for the domino. So really simple. And it's like any other bingo. You have your, you find your match and then you take the marker and then you place it on the board. Oops. Markers don't want to come out of the box today. Okay. <laughs> you place the marker on the board and again, you choose the next one. We don't have, do we have a C for carrot, D for domino? You just kind of move along. Let's see, we have L, we don't have an L. What is this, an ostrich or something? I'm not really sure what that is. Acorn, A for acorn, love that. I do like that, by the way, the phonics match the, um, the, the I spy, that does help. T for tomato, tomato. So again, you know, we just keep going through and whoever has a match wins. You wanna add a little extra challenge, it's the person to spy it first, Whoever spies their um, picture first is the winner. Now, just some things to note as an educator. 
these pictures here, if you think it's small in your camera, equally, or in your screen, equally small here. So in terms of, like I said, we first have the issue with the phonics. Another issue is with the actual gameplay itself. A lot of my students, I mean, come on, you're first learning your phonics and then you have, what is this, a beater? I guess B for beater or is it E for egg beater or... It's just, it's a little bit hard. There's a lot to pay attention to children with issues with scanning. You also have to look around for each and every single one because, in my opinion, if you're going to play, you play the full way. So you have to match the picture to the picture. So if you guys have iSpy, give this video a thumbs up and let's check out what I think in terms of having um, iSpy Bingo in your classroom. So what do I think of iSpy Bingo? Well, give this video a thumbs up and I'm going to tell you. Number one means I love it. Number two, you decide. And number three, stay away from it. I'll be honest, I'm going to go with 2.5, almost 3. And that for me was a very hard rating. And I'll tell you why. On, first, on the face value of this game, it's simple, it's bingo. So I do like it that kids, they know how to play bingo, they know how to match. So young kids could play and I found that really, really fascinating and they found it fascinating and at first it was enjoyable because they're spying, they're playing. So that's why I gave it a little bit of a higher number. Um, another thing I liked about it is that there are many different sides, both of the cards and of the actual game. So when you're playing, it's not the same thing, like you don't memorize it, and for an adult, I like that. But, but, what I don't really like about it, and I'll tell you, is first of all, the scanning part of the boards gets really confusing. I'm just gonna show you what I mean. Like, look at all this. These cards, some of these letters are so busy. So for a child learning their letters, actually I found more like 50-50. Not all of them can keep up with this card. So, okay, so they can't keep up with the cards. So they play with an older child, well, they know their phonics, and then it just becomes a game, and a game, it, it, I would say six months to a year if you're lucky, play it maybe like once a month, you know. So on first hand, the concept of this game is great. It has the I Spy, it has the bingo, it has the phonics, but when I introduced it to my pre-reader, a lot of them found it so overwhelming that it just didn't bring out the educational value. And at the same point, when I presented it to an older child, it was fun, it was cute, but it lost its hype, its excitement, because at the end of the day, it's bingo. How many times can you sit down and play bingo? So. Because it had a mixture of both, I would say you decide, hence the two, you know, the th sorry, 3.5, like you really decide, but err on the side of caution. If I happen to have been lucky, I found it in a, you know, like um, a local discount store, I only paid a few dollars for it, so okay, you know, we'll send it on to someone else. I'm not disappointed in this. It was a short lived game. I personally, to play with my students year after year, was not that excited about it. But for a few dollars, you win some, you lose some. Would I pay full price for this? Probably not. If I see it at a thrift shop again or a local discount store, would I buy it again? Possibly. But like I said, for the average child, this is going to be a very, very short-lived game. However, on the plus side, I know as a special educator, you sometimes deal with the issue of scanning, and that becomes you know, really complex. So in many ways, this could be used. So it does have its use, but you have to think so hard and really bring the excitement to fit, like I said, the age level, the the um, challenge level, and it's just so much to think about that from my personal opinion and owning a game school, there is just, there are better options out there. If you know a better option, well, I'd love to hear about it. Can't leave a message below thanks to YouTube's new policy, but don't worry. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out the links below because number one, if you are leaning towards buying it, definitely going to leave a link for you guys because I love you so much. Number two, I'd love to hear what other games that you found for scanning and phonics. So let me know. Click on my Instagram link 
and head over to my Instagram page and I would love to chat with you about the fun phonics games available or that you guys have had success with. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe.